Hello everyone, my name is Delzino Wilson Debriano. I'm president of Tag Team Marketing, leading the Black Business Network and the Buy Black Movement. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Deborah Wilson Debriano and the incredible, phenomenal production team that produced the film Black Friday. That is the hottest film in the black communities traveling all over the world right now. It's the big buzz all over the world. This documentary film uh, outlined black economics, buying black, black money uh, like no one ever has. And so today we're bringing you the producers of the film to talk about their incredible um, new product that just hit and is spreading all over the world. So how are you guys doing? Great. Great. All right. Great. Well, let's, let's have some introductions here. First, we have the vice president. Uh, Debbie Wilson Debriano, Vice President of Tag Team Marketing and the Black Business Network, and just excited to have been part of this project. This is so important. You know, it really is important because it's all about economics, completely. That's right. That's right. Great. Uh, Rick Mathis, uh, one of the producers, writer, director of the film Black Friday. And general all around Superman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. right um, and we have. April Love, I'm CEO of Ask April Love LLC, one of the producers of Black Friday, um, the film Black Friday, and I'm so excited for everyone to see this film. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Brad Lewis, one of the writers and producers of the film Black Friday, and under the great leadership of my brother Rick Mathis and my great sister April Love, glad to be on the team. <laughs> That's yeah. And, and the, the technical genius over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. Exactly. And so, dear brothers and sisters, you guys have produced an incredible film. We were honored to be mm -hmm. included in the film, and you'll see us in the film Black Friday as well. And with all of uh, the things that are going on in the world right now, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're fighting man we're mad we're trying to tell everybody that black lives matter you know we're, <laughs> we're going through a lot as a black community and you guys came up with this amazing idea to produce something that is inspiring black people by the thousands like you guys are really making a difference and this is going all over what moved you to even think about this to produce a film like this for us well as you see when the, when the film starts out um, there's a nine-year-old girl that asked the question, if you die right now, would you leave bills or benefits? Mm -hmm. That was an actual question that was asked uh, by my niece mm -hmm. of wow. me. You know, she didn't say it verbatim, mm -hmm. but she said it in a roundabout way. And I was like, wow, that's a profound question coming from, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. a, a young lady like yourself. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the thing that it did was it kind of sparked something in me. Mm -hmm. And um, with everything going on, you know, last year around this time, there was a lot of uh, people being, a lot of our people being killed at the hands of the uh, police. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if nothing was being done about it. So, um, you know, the thing that I wanted to do was, number one, uh, bring attention to that, mm -hmm. but also uh, put on our minds, like, what are we leaving for the next generation? Mm -hmm. You know, when we have a, a young girl or a young kid, you know, pose a question like that then, you know, we really need to think about that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as George Frazier said, um, I don't think we included this in the film, mm -hmm. but he said this generation, uh, the previous generation has left this generation mm -hmm. in worse uh, economic shape than, than the previous mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the first time that the generation prior to us mm -hmm. has left us in a worse state mm -hmm. economically than uh, the previous generation. Absolutely. So they wow. didn't elevate us, they mm -hmm. took us a notch down. Yeah. Wow. You know, so the thing mm -hmm. that we have to do is we have to um, really focus on our money now and get a better grip on how we manage it mm -hmm. so that we can invest, uh, save, and leave a legacy for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. And that inspired you to do all this work. <laughs> hey, well, you know, could, could not have done it without these guys here. So, wow. you know. Well, introduction. Tell us uh, why. Why get involved in doing something like this? Um, I don't even know where to start. I mean, when it was probably, uh, maybe 
a year ago when you first mentioned the project and mm -hmm. it was starting to kind of unfold mm -hmm. and he was trying to uh, I guess build the foundational parts of what this has become mm -hmm. and um, by hearing it, it was like an immediate like like meeting of the minds because it made so much sense that we have to it's not even like we wanted to it was something that we had to do it's something that kind of just was calling us it's something that we needed to have a responsibility to our community because we're in the position to do it so mm -hmm. let's do it let's educate our people let's educate ourselves in the process mm -hmm. and let's do something so profound something so prolific that it will make an impact that will kind of just kind of spring into all of our communities and that's what it's doing once the film was been like one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever been a part of in my career. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. She's wow. been a part of a lot. Of a stuff. lot, yeah. yeah. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brother Brad, you you oh. do a lot of work, man, producing, filming. The, 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 yeah. So, I mean. Why? Really, Rick and I have been kind of working around projects together mm -hmm. in the past and probably one of his first projects. Uh, the music and I'm, I was in the entertainment industry and, and music and um, I personally with this project I just like working on projects that that are so monumental that it's I get nervous thinking about them. Mm. you know <laughs> right. so, yeah. you know that's what I those are the projects that I tend to pursue uh -huh. so when, when you know Rick called and said hey man I think I got something that you know that's that we can work on then mm -hmm. When we started talking about it, I said, yeah, this is that kind of Mount Everest mm -hmm. kind right. of project, you know. Right. And yeah. um, so, I mean, we just kind of hit the ground running. Rick had already had some groundwork stuff already worked out, and we just started building on the ideas. And, I mean, after that, I think, you know, once you find a project that you want to pour yourself into and you right. believe in it and you trust it, mm -hmm. then everything after that starts to unfold. You yeah, know what right. I mean? I think the universe delivers that because you really asked for it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I got involved in the project. Wow. And um, so here we are a year, year and a half mm -hmm. after initial conversations. And um, this is what we present. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Gosh. What do you think of all of this stuff? Well, no, I was just going to ask you guys what kind of feedback, because this has been out a few, a couple of weeks. Two now. weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. So tell, so tell yeah. us, what are, what are people now saying? Because you got the before, you know, the conversation you were talking yeah. about how, you know, we talk about this. Yeah. You know, but, mm -hmm. you know, not, talking about it to doing something is just like this big <clears throat> step. And so now that you guys have completed it and people have seen it, what's the feedback? What are people saying, you know, as a result of this? Yeah, I mean, we're getting, you know, standing ovations. You know, oh, that's, wow. yeah, that's a good sign. That's a good that's sign. But I mean, sign, yeah. um, no, really, like, people are like, you know, like, this is the best, one of the best, or the best documentary that I've seen. Wow. Like, it's right on, it's timely. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the comments are like, you know, just, just mind blowing. Mm. You know, to have an ideal, a concept, and then, you know, to see that concept be born is, you know, like having a kid be born, seeing a child. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I, um, basically, what has been um, exciting for me is that people are calling from all over. Mm -hmm. And we've only launched, really, here, you yeah. know, in Atlanta. But people are calling from the West Coast, and, I mean, they're coming from all over. So I am so excited about the social responsibility that the people that are seeing it mm -hmm. are taking because we're so – we perish for lack of knowledge. And it's yes. a lot that we don't know, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of people that we, we almost – we always – I always want to say that our community is apathetic. Like, mm -hmm. we don't really care. Don't nobody care yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. We spend our money. I, I spend my money. But it's not true. People yes, do care. Exactly. People are buying, like, multiple copies because they mm -hmm. want to share this mm -hmm. information. Right. So that, to me, is the most impressive. And I think that's how we're going to get to that tipping point and spread virally because people want to help other people, and they want to see other people win. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I think it's going to go everywhere. Wow. All that's right, fantastic. All right, all right. I agree. I agree. I think one of the most profound statements that someone made was that night at the premiere, uh, mm -hmm. well not the premiere, the last screening where the lady just, <clears throat> she has five sons and mm -hmm. she literally came to Rick, over to Rick and I and, and she was almost in tears and she mm -hmm. said, you, don't, you all don't know how this has touched me. She said, mm -hmm. I just feel uh, broken and I feel mm -hmm. like I've failed my children. 
Mm. And I mean, wow. that that disturbed me. I mean, me, yeah. myself and Rick, we talked to him and said, hey, you know what? We're all starting at some point. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, just because what you see in the film, none of us all have all our ducks in a row. You know what I mean? Right, so this, right. is a, this is a process. We're all working through this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were able to, you know, keep the conversation and use that as common ground to say, hey, we, we're all starting from somewhere. So, you know, you're not a failure. You know, you shouldn't be broken by this. I mean, let's take this as an opportunity to move forward. Absolutely. And now you have the information. Now what are you going to do with this? Mm -hmm. So that, up to this particular point, I, that was probably one of the most inspiring and profound conversations that we've had about and responses we've had about the film. Wow. Yeah. wow. Well, you know, one at the premiere, there was a little eight-year-old kid that said, this is the best DVD. I wish I could have got it on, uh -huh. <laughs> on camera. But he, like, he was like, this is the best DVD. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. he wow. had his little business cards yeah, and everything. He was <laughs> yeah, he was like, networking. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, He's probably going to out-earn us all. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so. uh -huh. let, me, let me ask you a question. You, the amount of work that I personally got to see you guys do mm -hmm. is, is unthinkable. I mean, because you and your crew, yeah. I know just in the filming you did with us, right. mm -hmm. that's a lot of hours of work. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. set up and cameras and technical and, and, and we're in Atlanta and you guys are in Atlanta so you didn't have to fly to see us but mm -hmm. give us, everyone, an idea of the people that are in the film and the, the amount of hours that you guys put into producing this hour and a half mm -hmm. motion well, picture. Yeah, the first thing I, I would want to say is that, um, you know, when something, when you have an idea that grabs you in the collar, Mm -hmm. and says come follow me mm -hmm. we're about to do this <laughs> right. then you have no choice but to go mm -hmm. so working 15 hours 18 hours a day on a project you know is like like the time just passed by mm -hmm. like you don't really even notice you know the hours mm -hmm. because of the passion that we had in going you know going about putting together this film mm -hmm. you know so you literally work those days work you literally them. work uh, stay up two three days in a row working mm -hmm. on the film you know, wow. like we, we literally did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the passion that you have. So when you put that type of passion, that type of energy, emotion into a film, mm -hmm. then people recognize that because it's like making a cake. The energy and the love that you put into making that cake, people can then taste that. Mm -hmm. Right. So the energy and love that you put into making this project going through and making sure going through the details and making mm -hmm. sure the transitions are smooth you know the audio is good you know yeah. so you go through all of that and then you know you're still at a point where let me change this let me change that and right. then you just have to say <laughs> okay this is what we're going to put out Especially like you know, audio this is what we're going to put out yeah he's, exactly he's still tweaking the audio <laughs> when we finish yeah. print it already you still tweaking it yeah. still tweaking the audio yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, no, I mean, no, but I, I would say to that, I mean, countless hours, you know, and not just working hands on, but thinking about it. You know what I mean? Wow. We have conversations all the time about, hey, you know what, you know, what about this aspect of it? You know, and even the part in the film, well, I can talk about, I'll talk about it, but even the part in the film where we talk about Hiroshima. You know, at the end, and we parallel the destruction of what happened then to where the African American community is, and if those people can rebuild their way of life, yes. you know, in, in less than 70 years, right? Then where are we in that? I mean, and and that's the kind of thought that we said. You know what? Let's get outside of what conventional thought, you know, yes. might be, and then let's make certain that. And even if you listen to the to the uh, script that we have in there, which we're not excluding anyone. In that part, we're talking about uh, our Japanese uh, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in that, we're including all people in that, and we say we can learn from any and all cultures. Right. So that's the part about the film that's, that's genius to me, is that we just made certain that we went through it with a fine-tuned tooth comb to make certain that all of these parts are relevant, that they make sense, and that they're sound and logical when you think about them. So. Yeah, exactly. uh, that probably took more hours than, <laughs> than 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 that, and I mean, and the uh, last story that we we decided to go see George Frazier and right. do an interview with him, and I mean, that was literally a drive up, turn around, and come back, you know. That's 
That's yeah, that's right that's downtown. downtown. That's, right, that's Atlanta to Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, you know, freshen up and wash your face and then come back and let's go get it done and come back to Atlanta so we can put it on the timeline and get it ready. So mm. there's a lot of work, man. It's kind of a blur now. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, but, but the thing, the thing, you know, it was like we had to stay on a time yeah. schedule because... Friday the 13th, November, <laughs> the film had to be packaged and ready to and sell ready to the to people. Wow. So it was like, we this time, you know, like, man, if we went by that quick. You know, <laughs> so we, that's when, you know, we had to stay up, you know, two, yeah. three days in a row to get it done. Mm -hmm. To get it done. Wow. Phenomenal. Yeah, Phenomenal. Yeah. I want to say thank you for all that hard work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the result of it mm -hmm. has been incredible. And I just want to ask you guys, the film has sparked every kind of conversation in the world. It is inspiring people in all these amazing different ways. But when you made that film, what were you trying to accomplish? What goal do you want to see accomplished by having people all over the world, black people, watch this film? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, number one thing that like stayed in the forefront of my mind was, let's start talking about money. Because mm -hmm. in the African American community, it's kind of taboo to talk about money and finance. Mm -hmm. Because number one, um, money is connected to your emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I give you a hundred dollars, you're excited. Mm -hmm. If you lose a hundred dollars, you're angry. You're mad. So it's like directly connected to your emotions. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any, a lot of times we feel embarrassed right. to even talk about mm -hmm. it. You know. So if you have some and you. Uh, swindle it away, you still feel embarrassed. So there's a lot of things that make us feel embarrassed about talking about money. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing, you know, that stayed at the forefront of my mind was just start talking about it, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you hear in the film, um, towards the end, you'll hear mm -hmm. me say, you know, it's important that we begin to have group conversations about yes, money. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's really the number one goal of the film. You know, oh, to spark conversation, spark conversation. Mm -hmm. and then you know start applying things and the solutions mm -hmm. and start applying it. But well, yeah. you you did it because let me tell you the the uhus and the aha moments yeah. in that film and the oh lord moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they and you kept us on a ride, mm -hmm. a journey that mm -hmm. through that film mm -hmm. is absolutely. I mean, to the very end where now it's solution time. I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. really very well done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you want to get out of producing this film? What what impact did you want to have? Uh, the impact I still want to have mm -hmm. is to evoke and provoke. Um, I want to um, evoke people at an emotional level mm -hmm. um, and to come to terms with what they've done wrong and now what they can turn around and do right. Mm -hmm. And so to provoke them to change. I feel like it, it creates a platform for so many amazing people too to speak to people they wouldn't even have an opportunity to speak to. Mm -hmm. I think it's also an opportunity to educate and understand that Madam T.J. Walker, bless her heart, was not our only millionaire. Mm -hmm. They right. need to feel empowered about themselves, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people, they know their history. We don't. We, we're not taught our history in schools, exactly. and we don't really know what we're trying to live up to. So we, we have very low goals. Mm -hmm. We set a very low bar for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with a film like this, it evokes you to do better. It evokes mm -hmm. you to want to see people around you do better, and it evokes you to want to see the next generation do better. Mm -hmm. So to me, I feel like that's an amazing accomplishment for a part of your life's work. So, wow. wow. That's fantastic. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful. They're well, brothers. I mean, they basically taking everything out. <laughs> <laughs> so, they don't does that to you. The film does it. Yeah. 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 But I, I would say this. I mean, they get on me all the time about just being over analytical, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I can carve my own lane from what they've already taken from me. Mm -hmm. You know, when at the forefront of my mind was making certain that it connected mm. with people, you know? And even just in the language, you know, at night we would just go over, okay, is this terminology too highbrow? You know, right. so we had a lot of stuff in, in, that we cut out of the film that people wouldn't, they, wouldn't be able to grasp the majority of people. So you right. start talking about derivatives and, you know, some people right, went right, into, right. you know, abstract concepts when it comes to money. And we just wanted to make certain that it was that in, any and everybody could connect with the film. Mm -hmm. So that was really at the forefront of my mind, and I think at the forefront of all of our minds, 
was let's make it a, a, a casual conversation so people won't get turned off or afraid of right. a certain type of language. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. if you listen to the just uh, if you listen to it without uh, watching the film, which I did, and we all have, <laughs> but uh, you you'll get a chance to hear it, and it's just a casual conversation, and I think exactly. that's the great part about it. But yeah. So, yeah, so we want to take the conversation out of the Brooks Brothers suit. Exactly. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, sir. A lot of times people are intimidated by that. Exactly. Right. So if you notice in the film, there's very few people that have on suits and ties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Majority yeah. of the people are in, you know, just everyday common people mm -hmm. that you'll see walking on the street, see in the grocery stores mm -hmm. or wherever. Yeah. I think you guys did that really well, too, because I think like what you were talking about with as a people, um, there's a certain amount of intimidation when you talk about money because mm -hmm. it's not all of these big words mm -hmm. for just simple concepts. Right. You know, I mean, it's it's like money hasn't changed. You know, the act right. of money, you know, right. buying and selling has been yeah. around a long yeah. time. Right. But Client what has happened is like it's now it's being so unapproachable. Mm -hmm. that Absolutely. you can't even talk about it so you don't mm -hmm. say anything you know and I think that's what happens with our people that you know if you're not investing if you're not doing this uh, then you don't have nothing to say you, you know what I mean because it's like you can't even be a part of the conversation and so I think you guys did that very well and made it very simple and approachable and so you can see like what you were saying what you're doing wrong but also what you're doing right and mm -hmm. what you can correct right. and I think that's important because you know if I'm sitting here watching this and I can say oh I didn't know that you, you know what I mean it's like oh you know so now you can say okay well I won't do that no more right. you know right. what I mean right. Right. <laughs> you, know? Right. Right. you know but if it's so intimidating you you won't even get that that'll go mm -hmm. right past you so there won't be any improvement and I right. think you guys did that very very well in the film mm -hmm. and that goes Thank back you. to what um, he was just saying about connecting Mm -hmm. um, because you don't connect with something you don't understand. Absolutely. And so many people miss opportunities because one, like you said, we go back to shame and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to be in those conversations because I don't really understand annuities and da da da, -da. Right. Or I don't understand real estate and I know my, all they know is, um, my credit's bad. I can't, <laughs> I can't get a house. But they don't know that there's programs. They don't know the, the right. things that, you know, that they kind of take that gray and make it very black and white, like what David mm -hmm. was saying. Like, he didn't know this stuff. It's about learning. It's about researching. The, the information is out there. Right. But it's, it's just a very intimidating conversation to come into. Even having talking um, with a banker or someone, they're, they're still talking over your head. You got all these pamphlets. You're like, I, 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 I don't know. Exactly. So then you just don't do anything. Exactly. So Absolutely. Because people don't want to read, you know. So, no. so that's what we wanted to do, um, make the film entertaining. Mm -hmm. Right. Because at the, at the beginning when you come and you watch something, Number one, most people want to be entertained. Absolutely. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> you right, know? right, right. You don't want to have to come. You've worked all day, you know, dealt with the kids all day. So this is a recreation time. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to come and have to be lectured to. Right, <laughs> right, right. You want to be entertained exactly. and then slide some messages right. and some powerful information exactly. in under it. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially and in I our can, community. Yeah, I we can don't tell have you something mm -hmm. that you really accomplished very well in that movie. In the film is that you made me and everybody else that watched that want to take more responsibility yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the financial wherewithal of our future generations mm -hmm. of, our, of our families of our you know mm -hmm. that movie shook everybody that I know that saw it to the core it, it shook mm -hmm. everybody up mm -hmm. and that's that's a masterful thing to do without Pissing anybody off. Yeah. <laughs> or boring them with tears. Yeah, boring yeah, them. Like, like, boring them with tears, yeah. confusing them. They can, you didn't make yeah. anybody fall yeah. sick. You didn't make it as on the total contrary. You said things that struck right at the heart of everybody. Mm -hmm. And I, as I sat there in that packed audience at mm -hmm. your premiere, I saw people squirming in their seats because it, it literally you were talking about them. Sure. Mm -hmm. You were showing carbon copy mirror images of their families, mm -hmm. of their upbringings, and 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 every and it hit everybody by the time you were done. Yeah. yeah. And so it just massive. I'm, I personally believe this is a film that mm -hmm. every single black person in America, in the world, needs to see. Absolutely. Mm. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. We agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do they need to see it, right. they need to see it again, right. and, and again, again, and again. And again. Yeah. <laughs>
Because, because there's so work. much information uh-huh. in it. They need to buy it. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, they got to buy it. Yeah, well, let's yeah, rephrase yeah. Yeah. Everybody needs to buy it. You got to buy it, it. Yeah. and then watch it again yeah, and again. Right. You know, because right. there's so much information packed into those Absolutely. 75 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, you, won't, you won't get it all in the first watch. That, that was 75 mm-hmm. minutes. That's 75 yeah. minutes. 75 minutes. All wow. of that was in 75 minutes. Yeah. Man. Yeah. One of the things that they, yeah. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> One of the things I think it did too was you have black people that are sitting back and saying, you know, I know we should work together. I know mm-hmm. we should do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But a lot of times there's so much pushback. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? And so what you guys did with this film made it okay. See, I told you guys, <laughs> you know, this is what we should be doing. I told you this is what, you know, so now it made the black people that are, are out there working. And, and trying to make this happen right. and running up against opposition, you guys gave them an ally. So here, watch this film. Do you know <laughs> right, what I mean? So right. now you can see what I'm talking about. You, you see what I mean? Exactly, because you know we love to watch TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And George <laughs> Frazier made play. We love to watch TV. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll listen to them. Put it in that book. form. Yeah. Uh-huh. You got Audio. a better chance of them uh, receiving it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. What do you guys say we give everybody a preview of the film? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 So, tell, so us, this, tell us about the preview, bro. This is the film, Black Friday, and uh, we're going to give you guys a sneak preview of it, you know, so you can get a taste of what's in the film. You know, it's like sampling something, you know, sampling before you buy. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, enjoy the preview of Black Friday. The film Black Friday sparked from a question my nine-year-old niece asked. If you die right now, would you leave bills or benefits? I'm going to leave behind benefits. Bills? Well, I'll leave both. Benefits and bills. Benefits. And bills. I leave shoes. Jewelry. Got a little something saved. I got an insurance policy, but I got some. I got some bills too. That's a funny question. Here you are today, 140 years later, as happy as you want to be. When you're supposedly free and gone through a civil rights movement, you still only own and control one half of 1% of this nation's wealth. You have not moved one iota in acquiring the most significant and the most important thing in our society. It is not civil rights. It is not integration that's going to give you equality and equal opportunity. It is what you own and control that makes a difference in your society. monopoly game that you're totally ill-prepared to play and win. Black folk, you can't play because you never got your 40 acres in a mule. You're sitting and playing a game that you're not going to win. And if you know anything about monopoly, and you buy your land, and when you develop your land, you put houses on it. And once you receive enough rent from people landing on your houses, you then take your money and buy hotels. And then after you buy the hotels, you sit there and wait for all the rest to come around and land on your property and bring some wealth and power home to you. Um, if I die right now, would I leave bills or benefits? I'm going to keep it 100, man. I would uh, leave a legacy. We got a will. You know, we've mapped out. You know, the the insurance, like everything is, you know, mapped out. But I'm leaving my children and my wife, 
a business. So right now, if I were to drop today, I probably would leave more bills than anything, to be honest, because I've been financing my company and, and really trying to grow the brand. I mean, I'm not seriously in debt. Like I try and say over the bottom line, so it's been a miss. I'm sure I planted great seeds. And my words, I pray to the Almighty, a beneficial. And I do owe bills now, so I would owe some bills like student loans and a few others. I think I'd leave behind benefits. Definitely uh, leaving benefits and assets for my kids uh, when I pass, not, not bills. So we have to start thinking in those terms. No, I definitely wouldn't leave any bills. I mean, it'd be probably be very beneficial for somebody if I passed away. I'm going to keep it 100. We like Pac. We got stuff that ain't even came out yet. You know what I'm saying? We got videos. We got mixtapes. You know, we have things that, honestly, we've intentionally not released just in case something happens to me in the next four or five years where my family will still be able to make money off of books, you know, et cetera. So definitely, we leaving a legacy with a lot of benefits. Moving to Atlanta was a culture shock for me. Black people were in high positions, living the American dream. As my journey continued to unfold, I would later learn that much of what I saw was only smoke and mirrors. As a video journalist with Rolling Out Magazine, I had exclusive access to view the black community from a different perspective. My video camera was my passport to the world. In pursuit of my American dream, I continued to ask myself, what financial secrets had their parents shared with them about money? So did your parents talk to you about money and about the principles of, Hell no. of money as a kid? Hell no. I learned the hard way. I learned from losing apartments and losing everything I owned multiple times and being on the brink to where I had to really proactively come up with a decision to be like, you know what? I don't want to live this life. Money was definitely talked about. My father was a very active investor. My mom didn't necessarily sit us down and, and, and give us those principles. No, my parents didn't talk to me about money because I didn't meet my biological father until I was 17 years old. We didn't talk a lot about money. We talked a lot about character. We didn't have a lot of, a lot of conversations about it. Other than, is it possible I can get a nickel or a dime or a quarter? As a child, my family did not teach me about money because we didn't really have a lot of money growing up. Well, my parents talked to me about money, but not to a great extent. We were, you know, quite poor growing up, and money just never really came up, to be honest. Very few parents sit down and actually have an economic class on with their kids and say, hey, like my mother said, hey, this is right, that's wrong. But ain't nobody sit me down and was like, yo, this is a cash flow quadrant. You know what I'm saying? This is the employee and this is the self-employed person. But what you really want to strive to be is the business owner so that you can become an investor. Ain't nobody say nothing like that to me. I challenge everybody in my age category to start working with your grandchildren, start working with your youth, start working with your the children on the block. Anytime you're talking to them, talk to them about dollars and cents and how they can use that to make a better world for all of us. So what excites me is educating our children because I really think that that's where we have to start to help them understand um, that they need to save and they need to think about their financial future. They would talk to me about where money is and what account, you know, how much is there, there's a Roth IRA in this account, and all of these things they would try to explain to me, and they, they would do it when I was like 10, 11. I started taking care of my family at the age of 14, 15 years, of, uh, 15 years old. Uh, that's when I grew up, that's when I began to understand what the value of a dollar was. Nobody discusses finances. Come on, most of the guys I know, they learned on, on the way, the same way I did, later on in life. If I would have understood that early on, at a younger age, I would have been way further along in my career than, you know, things just now started to happen now, 40 years old. These things could be could have been cracking 20 years ago, but we didn't understand these flaw, these economic flaw principles. Now listen to me on this, brothers and sisters. This is very, very important. The money you earn, or your wealth, 
will determine where you live. Where you live will determine where your children go to school. Where your children go to school will determine your children's higher education. And your children's higher education will determine their lifelong earnings. And your children's lifelong earnings will determine where your children live. And where your children live will determine where your grandchildren go to school. And where your grandchildren go to school will determine the quality of your grandchildren's higher education and will, that will determine their lifelong earnings. You see the cycle of poverty here. Rashida Winfrey, financial strategist, and today we're hanging out at the park to talk to people about money. So we'll be talking to people about how they save money, how they invest money, and just their general approach to money. Come on, let's go. So I stopped you because I couldn't help but notice your shirt. So tell me again, how do you pronounce it? Ain't got no money. Okay, and so tell me, and you wear it so that what? And I wear it for style, but also I like the theme so that people who I don't want asking me for money will not ask me. What do you teach your children about money? Well, I always tell them, make sure you take care of the rent and the mortgage first. And always, when you have children, always set something aside to spend time with them because kids don't understand mommy don't have money. Are you also declaring that you don't have any money? Well, you know, when I saw the shirt at first, I, was, I had to think about it because I think about everything before I wear it. And I was like, am I declaring that I have no money? For me, no, because I know that I do have money. Would you um, rather have a million dollars today or a penny that doubles in value every day for 30 days? That's just like asking the question. I mean, most people ask, like, that same question, some people would say, would you have, would you rather take a million dollars in cash or build your credit? Well, most people say cash instead of taking the credit. Well, credit runs this country. So look at the Pacific. You said just for 30 days. But it doubles every day. Yeah, it doubles every day. I'm, I'm not, does that, does that one equal a million by the end of 30 days? So do you have an emergency savings fund? If you do, how long have you had it? And how consistently do you contribute to it? Good question. I have a small emergency savings fund, but I don't contribute as much as I should. Do you have an emergency savings Emergency to save, you know, I just see what I want and I buy it. And now having a great job as a cook, you know, it's like, I see what I want, I buy it. And like, I don't have a lot of money, but it's like, to me, it's like, we call it ghetto rich, ghetto fabulous. You know, I'm living ghetto fabulous, paycheck to paycheck. You know, nothing in the bank. You know, I regret that I didn't learn from my parents better money management skills. So sometimes you give your kids a head start so they don't have to like big, dig themselves out of something. They get an opportunity to dream. And that's our job to do, to, to give them an opportunity to dream. And my mother was my uh, personal manager, so I had a business manager and, you know, 14 years old, my mother would literally drag me to meetings with my business manager because, you know, at 14, I didn't really want to know all this stuff, but my mother was very clear on, uh, you know, making sure that I knew everything that was going on because she didn't want to be responsible for messing my money up. We're going to have to talk about these things because these are things that most of our parents didn't talk about. My parents, though they were very successful, they really didn't talk to me about the details. They did teach me an important importance of working, getting a job as soon as I could to, you know, to start supporting my own self, which was invaluable. Uh, I've always had a great work ethic because of it and because I did not grow up with money. Um, I always worked really hard to make sure that I had financial security as an adult. So, you know, at 14, it was such a drag, but of course at 41, I, I, I can't thank her enough. And my family was like the Huxtables. There were, I have 11 brothers and sisters, and 
And my mom and dad made us have to pay. We had life lessons. Like we would have to actually buy our own meals if we wanted something. We had to go and work, save the money to get it. We had to, you know, if we went to Olive Garden and we wanted some dessert and we didn't have enough money, they would make us stand in the middle of the restaurant and sink. So we never got anything handed to us. We, we grew up with, I would say, bad financial experiences, I guess. You know, my mom, she had credit cards and, you know, she wanted to make sure we looked nice. Um, so she did all the wrong things. Right. As most to be of honest. us do. Yeah, yeah, she did all the wrong things financially. Right. Um, and I would say just really just my exposure to school and college just learning more and learning from her learning from what she had done and knowing that that wasn't the right way and she she would tell us as a mom i'm getting to pass those gems on to my son hoping he's listening are you listening he's not listening on time i heard my parents talking about money on criminal time when they went in debt, when they had to borrow money to make sure I got a good go a go kart, and tell me a white man came down the chimney and brought me a go kart. When I seen them fighting the hard, how they gonna pay the bill they borrowed, the money they borrowed? That's the first time I heard them talk about money. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team. Wow. Started from the yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow preview of the film black friday is pretty powerful and to think that was just a little piece of it absolutely wow wow so in closing dear brothers and sisters if we had to share just one closing word with everyone after seeing that amazing preview mm -hmm. dear brother what would you have to say to everyone I would definitely say, man, make certain that you take this seriously and share this information with your friends and family members. I mean, I think there's no better way to show how much you appreciate someone than to give them information, knowledge, and wisdom. And I think we fit all three of those criteria. So definitely buy, give the film Black Friday to everyone you know and definitely spread the word. definitely say I know it was entertaining it was sound bite after sound bite of amazingly profound information but it's time for you to do something about what you heard in your household in your community in your church in your school um, be that change that you want to see in the world show them the film and have some real key components that you want to add that you can launch in 2016 to make it a better and more economically empowered year for you and also stay connected with us all right. Great. Great. Well, the uh, question that I have is, do you love yourself? Mm. Mm. Do you love your family? I mean, truly love your family. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you love your friends, your loved ones that mm -hmm. you interact with? Mm -hmm. Mm. If you do, then this film helps to implement something that has yet to be implemented amongst our people. Mm -hmm. mm. wow. When our ancestors were enslaved, there was never a process to educate us yes, sir. financially. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. There was ne never a financial literacy program. Go ahead. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln tried to do it mm -hmm. with the Freedmen's Bank. Mm -hmm. Two months after establishing that, he was assassinated, mm -hmm. as you all know. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we've never had the moment where we've been educated and we've gone through therapy to come from such a horrific condition right. mm -hmm. to compete in a society amongst you know, other Americans who've had a head start on us. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But yet and still, we're resilient people. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we're still right there, neck and neck. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, yes, sir. even after all the things that we've been through. Mm -hmm. So this film is just an amazing piece that puts it in layman's terms mm -hmm. and makes it entertaining. Yes. But it's also powerful principles that after watching this film, you can apply. There's things like, for example, um, you know, Devin Robertson says, your five closest friends mm -hmm. or people that you deal with. Right. 
if y'all can't come up with five hundred thousand dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars per person. Then we have a lot of work to do, mm. and we know most of us can't do that. Mm. Right. So I look at us and say, we have a lot of work to do, but let's do it. Let's have fun while we're doing yes. it. Mm. Let's embrace each other while we're doing yes. it. Let's love to trust each other and love each other while we're doing it. Mm. All right, all right, wow, awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, one of the things that. Uh, this film does is it gives you a tangible tool okay it's like a lot of us are out there fighting a good fight and a lot of times it feels like you're the only one fighting a good fight you know because there's you know you may be in your own you may be the only one in your family talking like this maybe the only one in your city talking like this and so you know you get tired and I think what this film does is it rejuvenates you but it gives you a tool so if you own this film then now you can sit down with your friends and family and say look at this and now you have all of these black people that have accomplished things, okay? Because we're not talking about just, you know, black people that haven't walked the walk and actually achieved something. You have that that are saying the same thing. And so now you have this tool that whereas people may not listen to you directly, if you sit them down and let them see this, that now that they can understand that this isn't just you just going, you know, whatever, just talking or what have you, that this is a very serious and important thing that's in our community. And so now you have a tool to do that. You have a tool now for your kids to see this and to be able to say, wow, okay, now I understand what group economics really means. You know, I understand how I need to spend my money and how I need to work with my community to spend my money. You know, so you have that now. You can go to the, on the holidays and you guys, instead of watching, you know, 10 hours of TV. <laughs> a day. A day. You can spend 75 minutes and actually get something, you know, from it. You can give it to, you know, the different people in your family, you know, and, and have these things as gifts that you can actually now give them something that can never be taken away. There is a reason why we don't know our history. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a reason for it. This wasn't like, oh, well, you know, it's okay, just forget about it. Because once we know, then you can do something about it. Right. And so to have this and now giving it to your family and friends, you know, purchasing, you know, think of 10 people that would be impacted by what you saw, including yourself. And think of what impact that can happen now. You never know what information can do, what knowledge will do, what will spark. And the next person that's going to be huge in our community that will solve this problem may be the one person that you actually give the DVD to. And because of that, everything changes. And so now you have a tool. So go and buy, you know, because we don't always have this information, but you have this information there for you already packaged. You don't have to do anything but buy it. And because of that, this is so powerful. So I'd say go online and get it right now. Go to the Black Business Network, you're on it right now. You know, open up a new window, go to the store and purchase one for yourself and for, you know, the other people in your lives that you know this can make a difference for. That's it. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go. And everybody else say, buy the film. It's really just that simple. You have to go ahead and get your copy of it right now. And, and if I can make a recommendation, it's get 10 of them, get 20 of them. And just like it's been said, get this film to every black person that you know, every brother or sister that needs it. Listen, it's like this. This topic is so important and this discussion is so important that it's, it's almost like um, having a community that's suffering from cancer. And people are walking around saying, I have the cure for cancer. And no one wants it because none of them know they have cancer. Yeah. It's a lack of awareness that there's even a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. But once you watch this film, you become aware, whoa, we have an issue to deal with. And there are some real solutions available. And it starts you on the path to doing something about something that is plaguing our community everywhere you find us. And so it's time for us to move. It's time for us to take action. And the way you take action is by buying this film. So let's buy it. 
Let's get it in the hands of the brothers and sisters that you love. And let's start ourselves off on a, a revolution, man. Let's Black, Black Friday, the film, let's make this into the thing that started the change that changed it all. All right? So I want to thank you guys for tuning in here to the Black Business Network, the being a part of the Buy Black movement. But I want to tell you, the best money you've ever spent, the best money you can spend right now is to buy this film. Get it in your hands, watch it, digest it, and get some copies for the ones you love. Let's do it now. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, brothers and Thank sisters. <laughs> All right. We look Thank forward to you. seeing you again Thank soon. You. Definitely. Take care. Take care, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.